I don't really want to eat. Want. Yeah, yeah, want, want, of, want, of course, want. But in order to fulfill, you know, my caloric needs, I don't want to want. eat the same dry beans. You don't have to eat the same dry beans. I mean, you're okay. creating an extreme scenario to try and justify this. You don't have to do that. Hey, nice to meet you. My name's Ed. Today we're at USC, um, and as you know, I have a banner here. And the banner says, why aren't you vegan yet? You've been waiting, you kindly sat down. What is your response to that question? I think there's uh, a lot of different ways to look at the whole vegan argument. Sure. For starters, I think that there are sustainable ways to eat meat. Okay. Now, you'll never find me supporting or condoning factory farming yeah. or you know, clear-cutting Brazilian forests to grow feed. Sure. But I think that if you're sustainably hunting, say, deer in a German forest in a forest here in the United States, yeah. You know, uh, considering that deer are already overpopulated, I think yeah. that's a sustainable way to produce meat. On top of that, I think that, especially like, look at where we live in South Central LA, we really live in a food island here. So I think it's sort of an, enti not entitled, but sort of an elitist stance to say that it's immoral to be vegan yeah. or to not be vegan because I look at the supermarket where I shop and I look at what I can eat if I were to be vegan yeah. and what I can eat as a meat eater yeah. and how I can just fulfill sort of my daily dietary requirements and it's yeah. difficult and expensive, right? To substitute and to find the right substitutes to be nutritionally healthy as a non-vegan. So some plant-based alternatives are undeniably more expensive than their meat counterparts. Yeah. Of course, that, that's part, that's, that can't be denied. That comes down to a few issues, supply and demand issues, also the subsidization of meat inherently pulls the price down. So there are, there are a couple of socioeconomic factors factors that can be that can be a part of that but the point still remains that some plant-based alternatives are more expensive but there are also a whole host of plant foods that are, are relatively inexpensive so when you look at things like whole grains legumes uh, chickpeas or peas in general lentils uh, those kind of foods they can actually be very inexpensive compared and can actually bring the price down so it varies on, on, on what you're purchasing definitely the point about the deer is an interesting point because from an isolated perspective, um, you know, obviously let's separate morality and sustainability. Of course, we separate those two things. So from a sustainability perspective, of course, one person going out into the Bavarian forests of Germany or indeed the forests of uh, Connecticut here in the US, for example, and shooting one deer does not have a broad you know, impact on the environment. Yeah. However, the issue then becomes if we're deeming you know, that to be a sustainable form of meat production, it's only a sustainable form of meat acquirement because hardly anyone does it. If we removed factory farming and tried to fulfill people's you know, desire for meat from hunting, we quickly realized that 30 million deer versus 350 million US citizens has a sustainability issue as well. So when we talk about sustainable food systems, those sustainable food systems are food systems that work to feed the masses, yes. which obviously hunting wouldn't be able to do. No, I do agree with you, but you asked me why am I not a vegan? Ah, right. Yeah. And I was telling you why I'm not a vegan. Yeah. Do I believe in veganism as a concept? I mean, I think it's one of the ways that we can be more sustainable as a society for sure. Right. But you asked me why am I not a vegan and that was my answer. And so you only eat a uh, deer hunted in the US? And so, no, I don't. But I'm saying okay. morally, that's what if I had the, I, I'm not a vegan because yeah. I don't have the means to be a vegan Right. Okay. at the end of the day, right? I have not the time to sit down and cook my legumes. But you have the time to cook the meat and the dairy I, and the eggs. I, I don't really cook meat. I cook what I eat whatever's available. I don't really have the time to cook for myself, right? It's terrible, I agree, it's unsustainable. If I had the time I would uh, I would definitely cook eat more sustainably, right? I mean I'm from Tanzania originally. Tanzania, nice. Right? And so I can tell you there the way I eat is sustainable and I do eat meat, right? Because we have a neighbor who's a cow farmer. Mm -hmm. Right? I see these cows every day, I see how they live, sure. I see the carbon footprint, I see how they're killed. There's firstly a kind of a consideration I have to apply to this, which is, uh, you know, when we talk about sustainability, the issue becomes about, um, it becomes less about veganism and more about like the environmental impact. What I mean by that is veganism is beneficial for the environment, but as a philosophy, it's, it's not about the planet. You're not in Tanzania, you're in LA. Yeah. And so from that perspective, um, you're not consuming the food that you say is justifiable to consume. Yes. So from that perspective, how do you justify consuming the food that you're consuming here in LA away from the, the cow farmer in Tanzania? No, I'm hungry and I'm a broke college student and that's the easiest way for me to get the protein that I need. Okay, so hungry, okay. Well, you can eat other foods. As, well, as, of course. Yeah, but it's the most convenient, cheap and effective way for me to get the protein that I need at the end of the day. And I realize that's like a very self-centered argument, right? And I understand the implications and I, I know there's a million different rebuttals that you could make to that, to that comment, but at, at the end of the day, like, that's the that's the reality for so many Americans and so until that changes and 
there are more vegan you know subsidies and ways for us to be vegan more conveniently it's just not going to change okay uh, where do you get your food from then if you don't mind me asking because you say you don't really cook food um, i mean so i cook a bit okay but i i eat whatever i mean like sometimes it'll be postmates and if i do get postmates i'll try and eat something sustainable sometimes it'll be you know a just whatever's open, whatever's close by. I have a supermarket right next to my house. And, and in that, and in that super, and, okay. So that, when you go into Postmates, you have options. Yeah, of when you go into the supermarket, you have options. Yeah. So from a convenience perspective, it's no less inconvenient or convenient for you to go into the supermarket and buy something else, or go into Postmates and type in vegan and, and get a delivery from Veggie Grill somewhere else, as opposed to where you do do it. So no, listen. So when, if I'm eating Postmates, I will try and eat a salad, right? Like that is that is something that I do try and stick to. And if I walk into a supermarket, I will try not to buy the beef, right? Because I know beef, especially beef that we eat in the US, is by far the worst environmentally and sustainably, right? It is, yeah. But will I eat chicken? Yes. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to cooking my chicken, right, legumes, cooking legumes takes hours. Like, not if you buy tinned legumes, it takes I mean, seconds, okay, minutes. Not if you buy tinned legumes, but have you had tinned legumes, especially in this country? Oh, yeah, I have. They're all right, kinda, chickpeas are nice. Oh, mate, come yeah. on, they kind of taste like shit, yeah. Not true. <laughs> Maybe that's just a matter of preference, but I'm, it's much, it's much more, how do I word this? Sitting down and cooking a little bit of chicken on my, on my, on my pan, right? Yeah. Searing up some chicken and then eating it yeah. is far more wholesome for me, right? The, first of all, the protein that I get yeah. is significant. The time that it takes is significantly less and it tastes so much better than that tin of legumes that I'd go and buy for $2 from Smart and Final and sit down and eat. Yeah. Like, Maybe it's a difference in taste preferences, but I think I think that's also I think this is kind of a, a dead end argument, you know. Oh, I don't think it is because your foundation for consuming animal products was determined by a few factors. Firstly, convenience, but it's no more or less convenient for you to buy something else in the supermarket and cook it. It was then down to cooking time, but of course the time it takes to sear a chicken and cook it thoroughly so you don't get ill from salmonella and E. coli is the exact same amount of time or potentially more time than it would be to cook uh, some chickpeas, some frozen vegetables, you know, add some soy sauce to that, maybe a packet of Uncle Ben's rice or something is pretty much the same time and when you look at the price a price for a packet of chicken breasts is going to be higher than it is for a tin of chickpeas and a bag of frozen vegetables and some you know a big bag of rice so listen you asked me why am i not a vegan yes, right I did, yeah. and i told you why i'm not a vegan yeah. when i'm not in this setting yeah. right yeah. and i i i have had I, i'd much rather fixate on that side of my argument yeah. than on when i'm in la because when i'm in la i'm not operating the way i would like to but when you're right. in LA, you're making choices. So, of course, there are going to be different parts in your you're life. Where choices, but you're constrained by so many more factors here. In LA, where you have supermarkets and you have an abundance of, of options that most people in the world don't even have. LA is one of the best yes. and easiest I, I would, places I would, I would to have that yes. choice. I would say yes. Have you been to Smart and Final, which is a supermarket where I shop? Yes, I, and I've been in, in, in a variety of different supermarkets, I mean, and they all have, have the plant-based foods. You're not going to the supermarket and only finding chicken breast. So the, the point I'm trying to make is the arguments that you made initially to justify not being vegan and are not justifiable enough to it, negate the consequence of, of that consumption. You know, the, the, even the sustainability impact, but it, more importantly, the moral impact of that. Well, you see, I think the moral impact, I, I, I don't think there's really moral implications to eating a chicken. I've killed a chicken, I would kill a chicken and eat it with no, with no problem, right? Sure. That's not my issue. I think you're basing a lot of what's so wrong with eating chicken on the moral on the moral side of it. I think that is a, the biggest issue. And sustainability wise is a big is a big issue of okay, course. Yeah. But I, it's I would beyond love to that. talk about the moral so Me too. why why do you why do you why are you so morally opposed to the eating of other animals? Uh, because the animals that we consume um, are sentient. Uh, so they have capacities, certain capacities the capacity to, to feel, so the capacity to experience suffering, pain, but also you know pleasure and happiness. And they're individuals and importantly what we do to them is unnecessary. So Obviously, in a time of necessity or in cultures where there is necessity, tribes perhaps, or areas of the world where the accessibility isn't what it is here, that becomes a different issue because in the times of necessity, you, could, you can justify you know, different things. But in the absence of necessity, which, you know, when, where we are in the situations that you and I are in, um, there is an absence of necessity when it comes to eating animal products. The consideration that animals deserve based on things like sentience, the capacity to experience and suffer, outweigh the convenience, let's say, of us wanting to consume their flesh or the enjoyment that we get from consuming their flesh. Um, that, that's what I think it comes down to. I'm sorry, can I, just like, Please, just, yeah. just to better understand your argument, what's the basis for how you like weigh one versus the other? I mean, obviously you're a human, you, we're all intrinsically selfish beings. Like how do you weigh the, the suffering of a chicken versus how much you want to eat the meat? Like, can I ask how you sort of draw that comparison? 
I asked... Better understand the grounds. Of course you may. So I asked myself the question, first and foremost, what do I think has higher value, taste or, or their life? Now, for me, obviously, in the position I'm in, I believe that their life has higher value than the taste I get from them. But back in the day when I used to eat animals and I would say taste, I had to think, well, what does that actually mean? And that meant that I, I'm valuing sensory pleasure as a moral justifier. If I acknowledge that animals deserve moral consideration and therefore what we do to them is a moral issue, but the reason that I'm doing what I do to them is because I enjoy how they taste, I'm saying that my sensory pleasure morally is a moral justifier. And I don't believe that that is the case. What do you think? Are you familiar with this idea of moral relativism? I am familiar. And I realize this is sort of a problematic route to take and Probably. you can point to Germany in the 40s and all that. <laughs> Maybe so. Go, going down that route. Yeah. But I think that is definitely something that one can consider. Um, as a society, we've come to accept it, and I think that as a society, we determine what's morally right and what's morally wrong. As a society, yes. As a society, as a whole. Well, what, right? what a society believes to be morally right and wrong changes and evolves over time. 1940s Germany sure, is a good yeah, example. I, I know, I, I gave you that example. <laughs> I, would have, I would have thought of it anyway, there's, there's, because there's, there's a multitude of different examples. And so moral relativism uh, is an interesting philosophical position, but yeah, in is. the real tangible world where our decisions have consequences, we don't actually live by the philosophy of moral relativism. No, we don't. I, I just wanted to throw that out there yeah, because absolutely. I think I think that is, at the end of the day, if you went around this school and asked people why they do eat meat and why they don't think that way, yeah. even if they don't know what moral to relativism was per se, that would be the argument that they made, right, in one capacity yeah. or another because everyone else does it. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, when you weigh your own needs versus that, versus the life of another sentient being, it's impossible to make the comparison, right? Because you're the only one who experiences your own experience like how do I word this properly you're the only one who experiences your own experience absolutely right and so at the end of the day you it's very easy for you to weigh your needs over that of someone else and it just becomes this completely sub subjective sort of roundabout argument that do I value the life of another other human over a meal of course do I value the life of a chicken over my meal perhaps yeah. we don't know right and so I think you end up getting going in this circle that is not that you can't come out of because I say well I value you know, the taste of my food over the life of the chicken, and you're gonna say, no, I value the life of the chicken over the taste of my food, right? And we're gonna go in circles for hours because wow. I don't know. Yes, on that line, but there's a, another way of potentially going about this. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, um, to, you're saying uh, the needs. Firstly, it's not, it's not the life of the chicken versus our, uh, the needs, it's our wants because it's not a need. So when we phrase it that way, it becomes maybe a little bit more, you know, easier to discern, you know, what the black and white should be. Because it's about their life versus our wants. But I think the way that we can maybe break through this potential barrier that, that we could have is to try and understand what your morals around animals are. Um, is it that you don't think animals deserve moral consideration and that's why it's fine? Or do you think that animals do deserve some moral consideration? And I guess if they do, um, what moral consideration do they deserve? Yeah, no, of course. I think that's a, that's a difficult question because yeah. you go, you know, would you eat a horse? And I go, no. And I say, would you eat a cow? And I go, yes. Hmm. Right? And so we end up go, kind of going in circles there because I mean, what's the difference between a cow and a horse? It all ties back to moral relativism, right? As a society, Which isn't to, a good moral framework. Which is, yeah, we've, we've sort of come to the agreement. It's yeah. not a good moral framework, yeah. but that's what everyone's argument eventually goes back to, right? It, 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 it can do. For many people. But, I, but whilst the um, discrepancies or the, I, I guess, the arbitrary lines that we may draw up between species point to a, a certain hypocrisy in, in, in our view of animals, I think potentially there's another way of getting there. Uh, and, and that would be to try and discern whether or not reducing animal suffering we should consider to be um, a moral priority. Should we pursue the reduction of animal suffering? Okay, can, can I ask you a question? And I, this is Could just... You come back to my question afterwards. I will come back yeah. to your question, of course. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've, I've, like, I've, I've spoken to other vegans, you know, kids in my class, whatever, and, you know, they've compared... They think that animal suffering is one of our world's greatest issues. Right. I mean, I've heard people compare it to some of the, you know, humanity's greatest atrocities, yeah. and they say that you know the mass slaughter of millions of animals every day is a is, is a travesty. And my question is, do you agree? Do you think that that, as a moral dilemma, is comparable to some of our society's greatest atrocities, or would you say that there is also a distinction? Right. Because what you're saying is that we really need to take into consideration the suffering of these animals, yes. right? And so my question is, how would you compare what's taking place now in this mass animal suffering with mass human suffering? Would you say that this is as great or a greater atrocity than, I don't know, you know, the killing fields of Laos or whatever it was? I mean, do you think that there's a comparison to be drawn or do you also consider it 
an animal life to be worth less than a, worth less than a human life because how many chickens are dying and suffering? You know, how many people suffered in the killing fields of Laos? Yeah. Way more chickens are suffering, right? right? And so if you consider that sentient being to be worth as much as a human being and a human's life, then you'd think that what's taking place right now is just or bad, just as bad or worse than what took place then. So I think you also, oh, deep down... Straw manning. Sorry, no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to strong man, but I think perhaps you also, you know, think that the life of a chicken is worth, worth less. I, I, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Well, even if we did reach that conclusion, and my, and my views on this are, um, I, I'm not, I, and, I, and I'm definitely going to bring it back to the question I asked originally, yeah, of course. but I, I, don't, I don't compare moral atrocities because I think that each moral atrocity is, is a moral atrocity within its own right. You know, what happened in Germany in the 1940s compared to what happened in, in the US uh, during uh, the genocide of Native Americans, uh, the slavery yeah. of, of, uh, of, of black people, of course, they all exist as their own moral atrocities in their own right. Now, the problem is if we want to quantify moral atrocities simply based on the numbers, well, then we would say, well, one of those atrocities was worse than the other because one of those atrocities caused more suffering. Yeah. But in effect, what that does is it sounds like we're devaluing the other atrocities. So it's not necessarily relevant to determine which moral atrocity causes much suffering, but just to acknowledge that each moral atrocity in and of itself is a moral atrocity and is something that should be addressed and challenged and changed. So, but then even if we do come to the conclusion that, um, and, and this might be a conclusion that you, you draw yourself, that in a situation where uh, there's a burning building and you can save the life of a human or the life of a chicken, there are many ways why, why you would morally justify saving the life of the human over the chicken. So in, in an extreme situation, you might value the human life over the chicken's life. But the question then becomes, that's, that's not the situation we're in. The situation isn't a burning building where it's one or the other. It's just a normal society where it's human, chicken or neither. And that's why the neither comes into play. So even if you do value a human life more than the chicken in those scenarios, it doesn't mean that you're justified just to kill the chicken normally. Which brings me back to the question. That's a great, that's a great answer. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Very well put. Thank, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, I've said it before probably, so I pre but I really appreciate, appreciate you saying that. So to bring back to the question that I asked before, should we, when we're looking at issues of, of moral consideration in animals, is the reduction of suffering something that we should prioritize when it comes to our treatment of animals? You see, this is a, this, this is a difficult question to answer because I've, if I say no, right, and I say we shouldn't minimize and try and decrease the suffering of animals, I mean, you know, that's like killing Nemo, right? That's, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a morally terrible thing to say. Right. And so, obviously, yes, I do think we should, that's, that's why I'm, you know, opposed to factory farming, because I think throughout the life of that animal, they should live the best possible life, right? I think a cow should grow up in a pasture and not in a, in a, in a, in a cage, right? But I think when it comes time to kill that cow and eat it and put an end to its life, I think there's nothing morally wrong with that, as long as the life that it led was decent, right? Because at the end of the day, I think we're, we're both, we both think animals should suffer less throughout the course of their life. Right? I mean, we, we both we both have come to that agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think you can kill them prematurely and eat them, and you don't. Right. And right. so this is where it becomes really interesting because what we both we both agree, and most people do seem to agree at this point, that factory farming is morally wrong. Okay, yeah. we we agree on that. And so then what happens, I suppose, is we we, we come down this line, and, and at some point we we, we split off. Mm. Okay. But the point is, if the aspiration from a moral perspective is to reduce suffering. Whilst we may say that there are systems of farming that involve less suffering than factory farming, the question isn't, you know, is this better than that? The question is, is this alternative the best alternative? Does it reduce the suffering the most that we possibly can? And if the objective is to reduce suffering, then that's why a system that still causes suffering isn't the baseline, if we can go further than the baseline. And remember that even those animals who are raised in those farms, the fact that they have a nice life and they're enjoying their life and find pleasure from it means that when we take their life, we're depriving them of more pleasure. Because at some point we go to an animal who's living a nice life, we say that's enough happiness for you. You know, or you've reached your fill of happiness. Now you can go to the slaughterhouse. But each day they're not slaughtered is another day where they'd experience more happiness, which is a further reduction of the suffering. Is, is a quick death suffering? Ah, okay, so that becomes, an interest, that becomes an interesting question. No, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's moral because it's, whilst suffering is an important aspect of the conversation, it's not the only aspect of the conversation. You know, if, um, 
well, first let's use a human context, you know, I could go up to a human, shoot them in the head and they wouldn't suffer, but it wouldn't be a moral thing because you're depriving them of, of their life and it's a non-consensual thing. Same with a dog, you know, I could shoot a dog in the head, but we wouldn't say that was moral because for the same criteria. So whilst you could theoretically kill an animal in a way that doesn't cause them suffering, it wouldn't mean it's moral because you're depriving them of, of their existence and, uh, you know, of their life, basically. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Like I said, you know, born and raised in Tanzania. Yeah. Um, very limited options in a supermarket, right? Very few vegan alternatives, very few ways to effectively source your proteins, vitamins, minerals, etc. The okay. things that you get from eating meat, yeah. right? Would you also sit down and have this conversation with someone in Tanzania who had no other means to, you know, fulfill his dietary and nutritious needs? Or is this something that's only limited to sort of the, the wealthier world? It's a really good question and the answer is if I was talking to a person or I was going to a culture or a tribe or an indigenous group of people who relied on it for survival, I, I would not have this conversation. This conversation stems from the fact that we have the choice and we have the capacity to do something else. Yeah. Um, but in the absence of that choice, the, the, you know, it, becomes, it becomes a lot, uh, a lot less of a conversation that we could have. Yeah. You know? So we, we've kind of spoken about systems that you would find moral. Um, I like to think that maybe we've, we've reached some commonality on, on the morality of those systems and maybe an understanding that reducing suffering is preferable even in those environments where it could be worse. Okay, great. Bearing in mind that when you go into the supermarket you go into, the, the products you're buying and the Postmates that you're purchasing are, are supporting systems that we have, you know, kind of both deemed to be wrong and immoral. From this point onwards, will you choose and will you, you know, opt for plant-based options considering that we've reached commonality on much of the morality of this and the system that you're supporting we have both agreed is immoral? Now, now listen, I've always been in support of plant-based options, right? When I, when, I had the, when I had the choice. So we came to an agreement that at some point it's too much of a sacrifice some point. to eat a plant-based diet. But you and I are way over the line. Because okay, yeah, we're way over the line, but we've come to a point, right, that, that where it's too much of a sacrifice. So I think for me, I've shifted the line a little bit. <laughs> Conveniently, maybe. <laughs> Conveniently, perhaps, maybe for the sake of debate, but I've shifted the line a little bit. When it's, con when it's convenient, right, and I know convenient is very different in Los Angeles to, you know, a village somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Big difference in convenience, but when it is convenient, I, I always have and I always will try and eat the most sustainable diet. Which you can right. now. Which I, which I can in certain circumstances, but... At like the, the circumstance day. you're in now. But you see, that, that's, that, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is the fundamental like, disconnect is that I don't really want to eat. Want. Yeah, yeah want, want, of, want, of course, want. But in order to fulfill you know, my caloric needs, I don't want to want. eat the same dry beans. You don't have to eat the same dry beans. I mean, You're okay. creating an extreme scenario to try and justify this. You don't have to do that. Isn't that all debate is? You create extreme scenarios to justify stances? No, listen, I, I, I do, we've, we've reached commonality for sure, right? We both agree that at the end of the day, you know, we are trying to reduce suffering. Right. Right? I, I, we're in agreement. And, I, and when it is convenient, I think I, I always have and I will continue to pursue a plant-based diet, right? right? When I'm back home, I will pursue the diet which has the least amount of suffering, right? And so I right. think at the end of the day, that's, 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 that's a win. Okay. That's a win. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, okay. So on that regard then, if we agree that we should uh, pursue a diet that causes the least amount of suffering, do we acknowledge that a plant-based diet or a vegan lifestyle is indeed that diet that causes the least amount of suffering? Sure. There you go. Thank you very much. A pleasure speaking to you. Really good. Have a wonderful to you. day. Yes. I loved that. Thank you very, very much.